Hi everybody, Liz and Annie back again. This time we're making a short video to kind of sum up our experiences using Zoom's chat function as we've both been teaching for the last six-ish months through Zoom um, and try to make some recommendations for what people might want to think about doing with it in the fall or um, as soon as you're getting ready to teach remotely for the first time. So at the beginning of all of this, uh, I think we both made recommendations that we've tested out in our classes and a lot of them worked really well, but when you are actually like in the classroom running a multiple hour lecture with a bunch of students who typically don't have their video on and are just listening to you uh, sharing your slide deck or, or lecturing about the content for the class, things work a little bit differently than we had envisioned. So we just want to highlight different options that people have that might make sense depending on the size of your class going forward. So um, I've taught a couple big lecture classes and a small grad seminar, but I've also had like lab meetings with my graduate students, other kinds of things, office hours, uh, which, you know, so we have had all these different meetings in Zoom, different sizes of classroom context within Zoom. Uh, sometimes the chat is much more useful than in others. So even in like a 12 person seminar class, my students and I were using the chat a lot. We do this in my lab meeting every week, like people are putting comments into the chat instead of just unmuting and jumping in, even though it's a small group. This chat functionality works really well in a big lecture class. And I know I have found, and I think we heard this from a lot of our colleagues in the last few weeks too, who have, who have tested this out, that students who would not normally potentially participate in the lecture or ask questions during lecture or make a comment or chime in are a lot more comfortable putting those ideas and thoughts into the chat. So instead of in a big lecture hall where they would have to raise their hand and ask their question or speak up in front of everybody, putting it into the chat feels potentially more accessible for a lot of your students who might be more reticent or less willing to jump in or worry about interrupting you or something like that. Okay, so uh, the options for chat are up to the instructor, or the person who's the host. And so we recommend, and I still recommend, I think we both still recommend, if you have TAs for a class, if you have a big class, you want to set the TAs to be co-hosts of your meeting right away so they have the same powers as you. I'm just going to do that with Annie so you can see me do that. So I can click on anybody's thing or I can go to my participants window to manage her if I'd rather do that. Yes, I'm going to make her the co-host. And then down here, I can click on this little three dot box in the corner of my chat and figure out how I want to set it for the class. So Annie is my only participant, otherwise it would have a plural here, participants. Right now, everyone can talk to each other. So at the beginning of my class, uh, when I'm actually teaching, I typically have like, this is the default for my room. So this is like, it's open, the students can talk to each other, they can chat to each other. But once I come in and I'm about to start teaching, I set it to host only. So Annie is a host now. Oh, and she's chatting me as we as we are talking about this, or as I'm talking about this. Um, but I can I can chat as the host. I have the, I have basically like all the power. So I can chat to everybody. I can push message to the whole class. I can chat to individual people. If I had more people, you'd see the individual names there. Um, I set it so that my students can only chat to the host, which means me and or a TA. But they do not. They cannot send a message. Just so you know to me and the TA at the same time. It goes to one or the other, so students are only able to message individual people. And if Annie were really sassy, I actually have to, I think I have to make you un-co-host. Oh, I don't know if I can do that. Uh, <laughs> can't rescind. <laughs> okay, let me see if I can block your chat anyway, even though you're a host. So if Annie keeps typing this sassy nonsense about how she's not enjoying my class, which is absurd, <laughs> I can try. I can try to shut her down. I can go over here and I can say, now you can chat with nobody. So keep it up. Oh, she's okay. So I think because she's a co-host, she can still uh, put these frowny faces at me. How do I, I wonder how to stop making you, let me see. Let me see. Maybe I can manage you in my participants window instead. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I couldn't find, okay. This is actually really important <laughs> in case you have <laughs> a TA who's misbehaving or somehow a student is inadvertently assigned to be a co-host. So from when I hover over her window here and I have these options, this is, it gave me the option initially to make her a co-host from here, but I cannot rescind that permission there. I have to open my participant window where for some reason, I have slightly different options. So I'm withdrawing the co-host permission. <laughs> now my chat is disabled. <laughs> okay, okay, let me make sure I have it shut down. Okay, now can you try to keep frowny face chatting? I can't, ha! there's no place to type. And okay. it says chat disabled at the top. Oh, perfect. Okay, and mm -hmm. now let me open that up a little bit. 
Okay, now can you can you re-engage with this class? Yes, okay. yes, now I can. Fabulous. Okay, so um those are there's a lot of different options for how you would want to control or shut down your chat depending on what you want your students to be doing. When I'm lecturing, I want my chat active, so I set it to host only so the students can either ask me a question or the TA a question, but I monitor it that while I'm teaching. We'll cover that in another video, like how to arrange all of that so you can keep an eye on the chat. Um, and then I have substantive participation via chat or unmuting asking a question in my synchronous classes, my lectures count as engagement or participation points for my students. So what I do, uh, like Zoom will do this automatically, but in case you also wanted to do that, you could save the chat. You could click on the same three dots, go up to save chat. You don't need to do that because it's gonna automatically generate a text file that is the transcript of the whole chat for your meeting. And you can go through uh, because it like timestamps and labels like who's just like it does in the actual chat window, like who's saying what and when it records all that for you in a transcript. So either I or TAs kind of depending on your setup for your teaching can go back through after a meeting after a class session and process that chat transcript to see which of your students should be maybe uh, awarded some engagement or participation points for something really thoughtful that they brought up or asked about during the class. And okay, Annie, what else what else is there with chat that we want to make sure we're telling people? Hmm, I think that's mostly it. Um, I'll just share, you know, my strategies for chat too, um, which in spring I taught um, two large lecture classes. Uh, and that was when, you know, the, the worry about Zoom bombing was very real <laughs> when we first started. Um, so I automatically um, made it so that, you know, participants or students could only message um, the hosts, right? So either me or one of my TAs. Um, and that actually I uh, managed to chat quite well. I was able to follow it along with just me without the support of my TAs. Um, and I actually heard from students that they liked having the chat um, semi lockdown like that so that they could still ask their questions, but there wasn't a constant scrolling of, you know, 250 students uh, sometimes contributing substantive things and sometimes talking about other things. So um, if you have a larger class size, um, just defaulting to um, host only might be a good option. Um, but every class is different. So you'll just have to, to see what works for you. Yep. Okay. Uh, so that's a recommendation updated based on months of teaching and boots on the ground experience now with trying to test this feature out. And we'll be back soon with more videos. Bye.